are these people? This guy, Matt Taibbi, 2023 Indie Media Award honoree, as is Racket News. <clears throat> top journalist, top outlet, top everything. And we're going to have a, a video here from Orf soon that will, he's also a top video producer. But <clears throat> he starts off by saying this is, and this is again a paid article. So please go subscribe to Racket News if you can. I'm sharing this because I think a lot more people should be seeing this than just the paid subscribers. And I am a paid subscriber, so I feel like as someone who paid, I can share this. He wants to introduce... Whatever. That's right. Whatever. Introducing the censorship files. What you can expect to find in Racket's FOIA library opening today why we targeted publicly funded anti-disinformation programs, which are, of course, misnamed. Last June, in the Washington Post, University of Washington academic Kate Starbird, and again, remember that name, Kate Starbird, complained that outside Kate queries... Starbird. Starbird. Outside queries about work in the anti-disinformation field were taking a toll. <laughs> well, Sounds like so Kirkland brand Star Fox Avengers. No. The Starbird Avengers. Well, the political part is intimidating uh, to have people with a lot of power in this world making false claims and false accusations about our work. And that's what she said about her, quote, nestled between plaintive photo portraits. Right now, there's a lot of bad actors who are using freedom of information requests to harass academics working at public universities, added Alice Marwick of the University of North Carolina. And that wasn't something we saw until a few years ago. Well, there's a reason why. All right. Whoa. Oh, boy. I just did something. I switched scenes. Now I know what I did. <clears throat> so these are some of the key players that are involved. You, you know, Katie Couric in the top left. Kate Starbird, who I just mentioned, is in the top right corner. <clears throat> Starbird. Clint, Clint Watts. Clint Watts. We're going to talk about him quite a bit. He's from your favorite, your, your favorite agency, Hamilton 68. And, yeah. and then... And then Nina Jankowitz, who famously is the the singing censor, the crazy person that uh, was going to be the disinformation czar for the for the Biden administration. So, what's going on here? In the last year, newspapers, magazines, and even broadcast programs like Sixty Minutes have been aggressively arguing that civic-minded anti-disinformation researchers are suffering under assault by outside investigators who misuse tools like congressional subpoenas and the Freedom of, In of Information Act, oh, God, I struggle with that, to slow or halt their crucial work. The bad actors, quote-unquote, are almost always described as right-wing activists, conservatives, Trump's allies, and so on, who attack beleaguered protectors of informational realm out of bias and bad faith. Bullshit. Did these hands make you look right-wing? <laughs> Well, oh, dude, I wish I had the 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 clip from from Misha. We got to put that in, maybe. So, but bullshit. These are publicly funded researchers who spent years developing tools for suppressing or deamplifying the speech of the very people paying their salaries. Taxpayers shouldn't have to use FOIA to find out what these programs do or how they're funded, but a look under the hood makes clear why they want things that way. First of all. Kate Starbird replied at length to queries about these documents. She had an overall comment. Quote, our team has filled dozens of public requests. We, we talked about that, producing thousands of emails. Not one confirms the central claims of your thesis, falsely alleging coordination with government and platforms to censor social media content, except everything that he's already published. But instead yeah. of acknowledging that fact, the abuse continues of the Washington State Public Records Law to smear and spread falsehoods based on willful misreadings of innocuous emails and <laughs> ignorance about scientific research and, in several cases, a lack of reading comprehension. Okay, Karen, I can literally, uh, like, yeah, hear... Okay. I can hear, like, the, the, the entitlement, and, and she's about to ask to see his manager. Since the Twitter files, Racket, in conjunction with Undead FOIA, has sent out hundreds of freedom of information requests to publicly 
funded anti-disinformation programs across the country. The full productions are printed here, <clears throat> and you may decide what is and what is not taken out of context. But here's just a short list of what you may find in the two batches of FOIA productions pertaining to Starbird's University of Washington. We've got an email suggesting that veterans and elders and residents of <clears throat> rural communities traffic in disinformation and are participating in that demonization of historically underrepresented communities. Okay. There is also a proposal for four to five EIP-like collaborations for monitoring content for upcoming Eep. elections, including election 2024. Now, what's EEP? That is the election integrity partnership that all of these clowns were part of that ended up suppressing, among other things, the Hunter Biden laptop as it was released because they pre-gamed and, and oh, yeah. pre-bunked it, quote unquote, for, pre right, they pre-bunked it pre for the social it. media companies. That's been, that, that word's been coming up quite a bit and it will come up in the, in these today too. Hey, but, phrasing! Yeah, but. There's also a bitter letter of resignation from a major anti-disinformation commission by a celebrity born in the Soviet Union saying the group's work reminds me of home, quote unquote. Now, oh, the, a, a little bit of Russia gating in there. A yeah. little bit. Well, yes and no. Uh, it's not Russia gating because it yeah. was. That's Gary Kasparov. He was a Soviet born chess champion who had to petition oh, the Soviet yep. Union to travel worldwide. He literally lived under, you know, the <clears throat> the communist regime as we were sold it. And he definitely yeah, has Jimmy lit him up, if I remember correctly. I, I seem to recall that too. Um and I actually listened to that Gary Kasparov article today as I was in the shower, but um that was really interesting. If you if you again if you're a subscriber, that's also a paid article. Um so there's also a letter from the organizer of the infamous Hamilton 68 scheme saying that the 69, 69. new administration had asked him to bring together anti-disinformation experts for a tabletop session. These fuckers love their tabletop sessions with members of the National Security well, bro, Council. I mean they spent a lot on Warhammers, and they got to get their tabletop game, right? Well, they do get I, a free they do get free lunch you know. with it too. They don't have to buy lunch those days because I think lunch <laughs> is provided. But uh, uh, they okay. But who's at this nice. tabletop session? Members of the National Security Council to develop strategies for countering disinformation with the guy from the NGO Hamilton 68 dashboard on behalf of the administration. But no, there's no meshing of government and private entity here. And, 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 no. and then there's also a letter from Starbird saying, quote, we don't have a lot of evidence about what works, adding that there is little to suggest that tactics like labeling, rebunking, there's that word again, media literacy training, or otherwise leveraging Digital pathways can change minds. Listen to all of the fucking terminology. These people have their own language. You'll find her comment mm -hmm. about the letter in an upcoming article. Yeah, all of that language is Sports. censorship, labeling, pre-bunking, yeah, media literacy training, uh, what, leveraging digital pathways. Why can I never pathways. remember that? The 1984 language. Ox, uh, uh, Inksock. Um, that's it. These are mm. items from just two Racket FOIA productions. Requests were sent in hopes of better understanding where the money from federal agencies like GEC was being spent. We found some awards, like a $417,000 GEC grant to Arizona State University that the school has yet to explain, for example. Uh, but most Mostly documents show a broad intermingling of academia, platforms, and federal agencies to address the problem of inconvenient speech. There is no such academic discipline as disinformation studies, or worse, critical disinformation studies. There do not or exist the underwater basket weaving. But... It's worse. There do not exist experts who have been trained to determine what is and is not a fact across a global set of all things, from epidemiology to voting machine mechanics 
to war in Ukraine or Gaza to J6 or Hunter Biden's laptop. Except for us. We covered every single one of those things, and we were on the right side of all of them, by the way, Matt. The mm -hmm. idea that there can be such a discipline is absurd and the central fraud of a gigantic new so source of government waste, which is also part of the problem um, and also part of their idea. These are not anti-disinformation anti programs. They're censorship technology programs and should be identified as such. What universities, federal agencies, and civil society groups are doing when claiming to research disinformation is developing methods for analysis, detection, and suppression of politically inconvenient content. The tell that this is their real purpose is that political orthodoxy can be managed by machine, but of course, truth in the philosophical sense, sense or even truth in the far lesser journalistic sense, cannot. Yeah, that's breaking that down a little bit. Okay. Yeah. How can political orthodoxy be managed by machine, but truth can't be? Like, it's inconsistent. So he's saying a panel of the world's best journalists would struggle to quickly determine whether or not a vaccine is safe and effective, but an agency like the CDC can easily decide its official vaccine policy. Yeah, as long as they're not paid for by Pfizer. Citizens might look at issues from many angles and argue over causes and responses, uh, but the Departments of State and, and Defense, or the White House, can come to unified responses quickly and even more easily identify speech they don't like. Because of the First Amendment, they can't clean out that content themselves, but federally funded middlemen organizations still can, at least for the moment, which is what's going on here. Federally subsidized programs judge speech not by accuracy, but by political impact. Even small truths might be judged to have large potential for harms. Truths, like youths. Truths. Mm -hmm. Researchers in these documents are shown to be reluctant to allow even true stories about, say, hiccups or small incidents in the vaccination process that might be taken out of context. Safe and effective, folks. Remember, safe and effective. I told that joke. I told that Jimmy Dore joke. To, I had a physical this week, and I told that Jimmy Dore joke to my doctor about how my heart swells with pride every time I think of it. He, he cracked up. He goes, I'm going to use that from now on. I said, well, then you got to credit Jimmy Dore. This is the difference between yep. truth and political truth. The former is elusive, and there should never be a government department charged with its determination. Otherwise, we're heading towards Ingsoc. You will read an insider's assessment that doing so sounds like a Soviet concept. We're not going to read that tonight. It is, and that's how people should understand these documents. Censorship files. So, part one was next. I'm, I skipped part one because I think that there's more important stuff. I'm going to stop right here real... Stop... Ugh. I'm going to stop right here real quick. And I'm going to ask you all to help out INN. There has been and is a QR code up there that is to support our friend Jesse Jet. Oh, look at that. It's still showing 50%. Wait, we need to fix that because we had something happen. I sure do. Uh, let's, let's go give that a refresh right now because people need to see where are the Kofi stream alerts INN. No, that's not it. Kofi goal overlay INN browser to refresh. Oh no, we are at 50%. I'm sorry because I reset it and I raised it up to $2,000. But last night on INN news, yes. we got to a thousand dollars, which was our first goal to get Jesse a new computer. We reached it and we love everybody and we appreciate everybody helping us get there. The people that are on this list are some of the people that helped do that. Oh, actually, everyone that contributed to that is on this list. There are others that have donated to the channel as well, and we wanted to thank and acknowledge them. If you do want to donate or to support us, we have the QR code up there, and that's to go to um, Kofi, which then goes to PayPal. We also have a Patreon subscription monthly, Substack, 
where you can subscribe monthly or you can uh, donate one time on Rumble or the best is Cash App. That is fee free that gets the money into Indy's hands right away and helps the network today. So if you can do Cash App, cash.app slash dollar sign Indy News Network, that's always awesome. Otherwise, please support Jesse with the QR code. We, we really appreciate you doing that. All right. 